First United Methodist Church on this third Sunday in Advent. We're glad you're here. Tonight is the Chancel Choir presentation of a service of lessons and carols. You will want to be here because everybody gets a chance to sing along with the choir. It'll be beautiful. And tomorrow is the Ladies Brown Bag Luncheon at 12 noon in the Fellowship Hall. It's just simple just bring your lunch or pick something up on your way and come and just fellowship with other ladies and just enjoy some time together this uh, week we have our meetings the trustees meet on monday december 18th the finance committee meets on tuesday december 19th and the leadership council meets wednesday december 20th 
All meetings are at 5.30 p.m. in the Wesley Bible classroom. Thank you. All right, just like we did last week, we're going to pass the piece. I understand we have RSV, the flu, and apparently maybe some pneumonia traveling around. So it's perfectly fine to give the elbow of greeting, okay? Huh? Or the fist bump, right? Just use the back of your fist because you hardly ever wipe the back of your fist on your... The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's share the peace. stories of what God has done. Our stories speak like these candles shine, with resilient hope, evolving peace, and unexpected joy. Our stories ready us and the world for the deepest joy that only Jesus brings. Let us pray. O coming one, help us to appreciate all the small joys of this season, remembering always that there are only little lights pointing to the great, deep, and full joy that we await in thee. And remind us of your true and future joy, especially when the small joys are hard to find. Amen. 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 Let us stand and sing page 204. We'll be singing it twice. <laughs>
us. That's part of our confession of faith. Will you join me in uh, confessing your faith through the Apostles' Creed that you find printed in your worship bulletin? We confess our faith together saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We are grateful for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, we've had, uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've had Elf School, we've had Tis the Season Dinner, we've uh, created uh, lunches for folks for a fundraiser for Embrace Alabama Kids. Many of you have been involved, and I'm so grateful. Uh, to see the, the team effort that uh, has been put forth. It's through your giving that we can do those sorts of things, that we can have a facility, that we can gather together in and make those things happen. I'm grateful for your faithfulness. You still have time uh, to get your pledge card in if you've not done that yet, but uh, uh, please prayerfully consider doing that. Uh, your finance committee will be hard at work and already has been creating a budget for this new year, not just for numbers, but for ministry. And we are grateful for your faithfulness. Let's receive our Lord's tithes and offerings this morning. Lord, thank you for the joy that we have as we give. Thank you for the blessings that you poured out upon us all. And now we return a portion of what we've received from your own hand back to you to be used for your glory and for the good of your people in preaching the gospel all around the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
outside, but James Spann assures us we, we probably won't have snow for Christmas. Did we have snow for Christmas last year? Did we have it the year before that? So we don't even expect it down here, but we will have mosquitoes. All right, so back when I was your age, sometimes we would play a game when we were in school called the telephone game. Now back in the old days, Telephones had a rotary dial. Do that and go t -t 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 -t. and they were plugged into the wall with wires. It wasn't like we have phones now that we carry around in our pockets and purses and back pockets and all that. So when we play telephone game, somebody would tell somebody, the first person in a line, we'd tell them something, and that person had to share it with every person in the line. And when you got to the end, you found out whether what had actually been said was what was said. All right? So I'm going to turn my mic off because I don't want everybody to know. And I'm, I'm going to start with you because I know you'll listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Tell him. Did it make sense? Did it make sense? Okay. So tell, tell him and see if, see if, we'll see if it's the same thing. Tell, tell John. He's an uncle after all. Uh, with his cousin. First cousin. What was it? 
what did he do? Do you remember? Bees? What did you start with? You like, you what? Oh, you like puppies. Well, this sounds a lot like some of my phone conversations, right? <laughs> By the time it gets to the end, sometimes we, we don't know, right? Well, the good thing is, when we talk about God and when we talk about Jesus, we have the Bible, and we can just tell people what it says in the Bible. And the Bible tells me that Jesus loves us. And so that's part of what we're going to talk about today in church is testifying, that is, telling people what God is doing for us, right? Jesus loves us. That's probably about the most important thing we can tell people. Let's pray and thank God for Jesus. God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he loves us and that we can tell other people that he loves them too. Lord, help us to do that. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that encourages us and reminds us of what you've told us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks, y'all. We don't get to sing Christmas carols very much, so we're going to sing all the verses of O Little Town of Bethlehem on page 230, Stand As You're Able. December must be a heck of a month. And so uh, I am grateful for all of you 
who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Some of you have been married almost as long as I have been alive. And that is an incredible thing uh, in this day and age. And so we thank God for your blessing upon our lives. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, as we center ourselves, we lift up those unspoken requests and needs to you. We know that you alone can answer them and that you alone need to hear them. We thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you, God, for your church. God, your church is gathered in some difficult places these days. We pray, oh God, that your church would continue to be faithful. Bless her, Lord. May her strength and her courage come from you, the Holy One of Israel, the Holy Child of Bethlehem. God, we pray that your church might be in continual adoration and worship of you, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the world we live in, torn by strife, by war, by rumors of war, violence, destruction. God, there's a lot that's going on. Some of our Friends and neighbors have lost houses and churches in tornadoes lately. Our sister churches are gathering in different places because their building is destroyed. But we thank you, God, that the church is not the building, but the people who inhabit it. And you, oh God, are our hope and our strength for you inhabit us. God, we pray for the world that we might be good neighbors to each other, that we might take care of the hungry, the poor, the disenfranchised, the downtrodden. God, help us to be good, good neighbors. We pray for the leaders of nations that they might be good shepherds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are hurting in body, mind, and spirit this morning. Lord, for those with the flu, with pneumonia, with RSV, and all of those things, Lord. We pray for those who are hopefully getting out of the hospital and for those that are getting ready to go in. We pray for the doctors and nurses that they might treat them with compassion and wisdom. We pray, God, for those whose minds are hurting, Lord, who are uh, struggling through this season. I pray, God, you might comfort them. I pray, God, for the counselors and the therapists that take care of us in these days, that you might grant them wisdom and compassion. For those, Lord, whose wounds are deep and hidden, Touch them, Lord. Give them strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you, God, for the communion of saints. We miss them in particular this time of year. We are reminded of how they helped us celebrate Advent and Christmas and how their lives were intertwined with us. God, we thank you especially for John Lee Fleming and for Margie Brown Hicksford. May their memories continue to be for a blessing. We thank you, God, for that of them which lives in each of us. May we continue to be faithful to their memory and to your call upon our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray together, Lord, as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Please stand as you are able for the reading of the scripture. Our scripture reading is from John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8 and 19 through 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Finally they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the, one, the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Kawhi. At least in the back. I don't ever get to hear them where you are. I I get to hear well, I get to hear gay. That's not bad. But I don't ever get to hear the whole choir. So uh, uh, great. Thank you so much. Well, today we're going to talk about testifying. Some of y'all grew up in a tradition like mine where. We'd have testimony meetings. And folks would get up and they'd talk about what God had done in their lives. Sometimes they'd tell the same old story. Sometimes they'd talk about something new. I went to a friend's church one time, Mount Calvary Baptist Church over in, in Bessemer. No, it wasn't Bessemer. It was uh, over near Caraway Methodist. And... Uh, an older man stood up, wizened through the years, a lean, mean fighting machine. And he started off his testimony with this. He brought me from a mighty long way. And I can tell you, brother, it picked up speed after that. He testified to what he knew. Caught on fire one day working on a car. And he was about to run and he said he heard a voice tell him, don't run. He said, so I laid down. And folks gathered around him and snuffed out the fire. And when he stood up, the only thing remaining of his shirt was the collar and the placket. He said, he brought me from a mighty long way. He testified to what he knew, how God had intervened in his life because he took off running him being on fire and all, he'd outrun. I don't know about y'all, but if I catch a fire, I'm going to outrun whatever's after me. We testify to what we know. I was a part of Governor's Honors in Georgia when I was growing up. It was a summer enrichment program for selected students in different subject areas, math, science, communications, or English, history. It seems like we even had a political science wing. We were at Wesley College near Macon, Georgia uh, in the late 70s. And we had an experiment where we went around the campus in pairs. Now, one of the people in the pair was blindfolded. They could not see. And the other person in the pair could not speak. And so the experiment was, how do you communicate without words? There was a third group who were the, let's call them the antagonists. 
They couldn't touch people, but they could use words and they could shout and they could do everything they wanted to to disorient people, but not touch them. I wound up in that third group. I'm not sure if it was by choice or if I was appointed to be a harsh, malevolent, antagonistic guard. It was verbal abuse. And I found myself enjoying it. Which I got to be honest with you was a little frightening. We were debriefing after the exercise, and at some point during the debriefing, I broke down sobbing. It was all too real. That experience was all too real. I couldn't bear the thought of inflicting that sort of abuse and suffering on someone. I realize how easy it is to be that person now. It doesn't take much. A friend of mine, Phil Osborne, was part of an Easter play at First Baptist Rossville. Part of, the, part of the play was they were marching down the aisle and the crowd was shouting, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! Phil Osborne told the story of being one of those who was shouting, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! Crucify Him! struck him to his core. He got into the part a little too much. But Jesus got a hold of his heart a little bit more. And he remembered what it was like. I don't want to be that person. I want to be a person of hope. I want to be a person of encouragement. I want to be a person that shines the light, not drags people down into my darkness. You see, the problem was I was acting in ways that weren't in concert with who I wanted to be. Maybe y'all have never done that. I, I don't know. Sometimes the world defines us in ways because they see a certain thing. They want to define us in ways that don't really align with who we are. We're called Christians because we're supposed to be followers of Christ. But I gotta tell you, sometimes people who call themselves Christian act like anybody but Christ. I don't wanna be that person. I wanna be like Jesus. People wanna stick a label on it. Matter of fact, if you start forgiving people, if you start loving people, if you start feeding people, if you, if you start lifting people up and generally making lives, people's lives better, Folks are going to label you. They're liable to call you a liberal or a socialist. Some of those folks that call you a socialist are drawing their social security, but we won't talk about that. I'm going to get mine one day if there's any left. My kids won't. That's all right. They're paying for mine. But you know... Folks want to label you, but the labels don't always stick. I called my DS Dan Morris one day. <clears throat> I said, hey, what you up to? He said, oh, I'm trying to make our Methodist paperwork fit our Methodist realities. He had all kinds of paperwork for charge conferences, and some of that paperwork just didn't line up with the realities. Every Methodist church is supposed to have a UMW, a United Women of Faith now. Not every Methodist church has a UMW. So somebody's got to do something with that paperwork. We're supposed to have X number of committees. Some churches that have five or six people attending, those labels don't quite fit because everybody's all on one. Well, really, everybody's on every committee because you don't have enough to have all of the different committees, right? Sometimes the labels don't fit. Yet we are called to be like Jesus. We are called to act and to love 
and to be like Christ not only in, in this Advent season, but in every season of life. We are called to testify to the reality of Jesus Christ in our lives with our very lives. Not just our words, but with our lives. John the Gospel writer makes a claim that John the baptizer was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. Now, to testify means you tell what you know. If you go to a court of law, a good lawyer or a good judge won't let you get away with hearsay. You have to bear witness to what you know. I was in a Baptist church as their pastor. And a retired pastor who was uh, causing some trouble started out his conversation with, well, I heard in the beauty shop. Y'all, <laughs> if you start a different way, if you're going to tell a story, don't start with, I heard it in a beauty shop. Some of y'all, some of y'all go to beauty shops. Have, is everything you hear gospel in the beauty shop? Like, I'm not going to tell. As a matter of fact, I have avoided a couple of beauty shops and barber shops in my lifetime because I just didn't want to hear all that. What I wanted was a haircut and a moment of peace. I wanted to fall asleep in the chair like I did when I was a little kid. Right? You witness to what you know. John's task was given to him by God. Isn't it amazing how God views humanity? God, God thinks more highly of us than we think of ourselves. God lifts up humanity by, by giving us the privilege of sharing the gospel. And God joined God's self with us in Christ Jesus. He became Emmanuel, God with us. That, that's truly a Christmas miracle, y'all. That we get that choice. We get that responsibility. We get that awesome gift of sharing the gospel, sharing the light. And John is fulfilling his task with his words and with his life. And his task is to testify concerning the light. Each of us have that task. You, you don't have to be called into vocational ministry. You don't have to be like John the Baptist and wear funny clothes and eat bugs and honey and, and go out into crazy places. You don't have to do that. You can just be who you are, right where you are, and testify concerning the light. Well, we all have that responsibility to testify concerning Jesus. John tells them, Jesus is amongst you. Even though you don't know it, he's always been there. Go back up to John, the beginning of John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. We talk about preparing for Jesus during Advent, and John is showing us that what we, we've already experienced Jesus. We may be getting ready, but we've already experienced Jesus. He was there in creation. And we just weren't aware of what Jesus was doing around us, and John is making us aware. The religious leaders challenged John the baptizer. Who are you? Maybe I put a little too much inflection on that. Who are you? I got a feeling though, it's more like, who are you? John said, I'm not the Messiah. You see, they wanted to find this person that said they were the Messiah and they wanted to kill him because he was messing up a good game they had going. John said, I'm not the Messiah. Well, are you Elijah? I am not. Are you the prophet? No. Well, who are you? We have to tell these people something. Who are you? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Next time, next time somebody asks you, what's your name? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of our Lord. You're what? You who? 
Who gave you the authority to do this? Who gave you the authority to baptize? And John doesn't argue with them. He could have. We probably would. He simply says, I baptize you with water. But there's one coming after me whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. I can't even tote his water. That's a southern paraphrase. Not only is he coming, he's here. You just didn't see him. You just didn't recognize him. Perhaps it was the knowledge that, that Jesus was coming that gave John the baptizer courage. It's hard sometimes when you're challenged by the culture around you to have that courage to speak up. Many of you have been challenged to act in ways that don't align with your values of love and mercy and grace. You have been pushed to your limits. And still, still, you have shown love and mercy and grace. It's not been easy, I know. But as my daughter testifies, if the mountain was smooth, you wouldn't be able to climb it. I have smart kids. Paul reminded us of what God said to him in his struggles. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength, my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul said, so I'll, I'll gladly boast all the more of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. What in your life points to the light of Jesus? What in your daily life, what in your inner life, what in your outer life points to the light of Jesus? Someone shared to me with me this week that some of our citizens were complaining about our Christmas parade here in Jackson. They were, they were unhappy that it seemed to have more to do with the Grinch than with the Savior. Apparently they didn't see a float or anything that had to do with the Savior. I, I get it. I can see where they might be upset. However, I'm more concerned about the parade of our lives not having anything in it that points to the Savior. I appreciate folks loving Jesus outwardly when people are looking, but I am deeply concerned about how people are not living out the love of Jesus that we know in our hearts when no one is looking. Y'all, when no one is looking, can you, can you still testify that Jesus is the light? When no one is looking, is Jesus your light and do you shine that light on others? That can anyone, anyone can shine the light of Jesus on purpose. What I mean is, is the pattern of your life is your unconscious being that of shining the light of Jesus into people's lives. Anybody can act like something if they're just acting. But to live it out is an entirely different thing. Who are you? Well, I'm not the Messiah. Good. Are you, are you Elijah? No. Are you a prophet? No, not exactly. Well, who are you then? I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness of this world that Jesus is the light. And Jesus loves you. That's who you are. Do people see the light, the love of Jesus in your eyes? Someone once said, you can always tell a pilgrim they have the light of home in their eyes. Do you have the light of home? Do you have the light of heaven? Do you have the light of Christ in your eyes when you look at people? Or does it look like Satan stoking the fires in your eyeballs? I'm guilty. How can we testify to the light of Christ, the hope of Advent in our churches this Advent season? How can we testify to the light of Jesus in our lives this season. 
Y'all, I know this sounds simplistic. Start with a smile. My wife's been doing a good job of this lately. I'm gonna brag on her. She engages people in the checkout line. She talks to the cashiers. I'm trying to get my credit card out of my wallet and trying to figure out where I'm supposed to tap or stick or swipe or what on the machine. By the way, it's not tap. If it was tap, it'd be done like that. It's mash and hold your credit card on the machine. I guess that takes too much room on it though, right? Mash and hold, they'd have to translate that for anywhere north of Washington, D.C. She'll engage the cashier, talk to them. How are you today? I have a Merry Christmas. And, and people love it. Like they're not, get this crazy lady away from me. Nobody said that yet. Right? Yeah. yeah. There's still time. Start with a smile. A listening ear. People will tell you what's going on in their lives. And they don't need you to fix it. They just need you to listen. And they can tell whether you have a caring heart or not. Or if you have a mind to understand that seeks to understand. Y'all, it can be that easy to share the light of Christ in people's lives. A smile, a listening ear, a caring heart, an understanding mind. I know the world is changing. The world has always been changing. Ever since it was created, it's been a changing. We've always lived in a changing world. But I can tell you something I know. I can testify about this. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Jesus never goes out of style. If, if you find somebody that says to you, well, I just don't think Jesus is in style anymore, all that stuff about God loving us, that's, that's somebody you probably want to stay away from. Or let them see the light in your eyes. Listen to them. And then testify that Jesus still loves them. Just like he still loves you. And he still loves them. Whoever them is, are all of them. For God so loved the world, we're all in this world. Some of us have had the extreme privilege of leaving this world and coming back. But we're all in this world. Not a single one of us has been born elsewhere. And God loves you so much that Jesus came and gave his life. And lives again. And he came for all of those people that the labels don't stick on quite well, including ourselves. Testify. Testify to God's goodness in you in Christ Jesus and let people know how much Jesus loves you. Lord, Thank you that we don't do that alone. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that reminds us and empowers us and encourages us. Thank you for your word that undergirds us. Lord, if ours is the only voice, help us to cry out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn, we're going to turn to page 188. We say, Christ is the world's light. Stand as you're able.
tonight with uh, lessons and carols. Choirs worked really hard. Charlene, the choir, and our uh, very accomplished companies have worked very hard. I'm grateful for all of them. I look forward to celebrating Christ again with you tonight. God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. Go in peace and serve Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.